All right, welcome back. We are continuing to fish here at the Seversky Donuts River. Trying a couple things. I think we've got worms and uh, grasshoppers. I think it was worms. Yeah, worms and grasshoppers. We may move these around a little bit. Just trying to see, again, still trying to find out like some decent places to have feeder rods. But primarily what we're doing is using the match rod. If you didn't see the previous videos, um, isn't that size 16 hook a little, a little, uh, a little big for the mayfly? I could have sworn we had like 18 was what we decided on. But this is a match rod and we are using the mayfly bait, uh, primarily going for the Pontic Shad. And there's a good example of one. I just don't know why 16 was on there. Did we try something different maybe? I think even 20 might even be what we were using initially. Um, not that it probably matters that much. I'm just a little confused at why I had such a big hook on there. 16 on this one too. Maybe I'm not remembering right. Maybe. Maybe we did settle on 16. What did I go to? 20? Well, let's see what we're catching here on 20 for a minute. I guess I can look back in the comments. Dif different people had different suggestions on, uh, on sizes. For the hook sizes. Again, I don't know. It's going to make a huge bit of difference. Um, first couple casts with the 16 hook on there. Bites were happening pretty consistently and uh, I'm sure on the 20 it'll be fine too that's something really small isn't it oh it came out I was like wow I was wondering if putting the feeder rods a little closer to the shore would be better, but so far it hasn't been. They've been in there long enough that if it was going to be an active spot, we'd have had, had bites by now. So we may need to move those around. I really just don't want to fool with the feeders too much during the morning hours when the Potential for catching some nice shads is, is active. And this is with a 3.1 fluorocarbon leader. So we want to be careful on how quickly we jerk it when there's a fish on. Not break the line before we realize what's what's on there. This just seems like such a good place to level up float fishing. To me, you're making a reasonable amount of silver and the bite rate is just tremendous. Now, 
we've only really had one so far that's been in that range where you see the jump in silver. There's a point in float fishing. So we're now up to 60.9 on the float fishing. That's the other good thing about, you know, if you're trying to level up float fishing, obviously during happy hour in a spot like this where you're getting a good bite right now, this is what we want. Anything 200 gram or above, really, you see the jump in silver. And if you get a bunch of those, that's going to really add up. That's the bell with the worms on it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it is. It's a little chub, isn't it? Oh, no, it's a little eyed. Okay. That's weird. Again, I just don't think I'm going to fool with the feeders until this morning hot time is over. Then during the afternoon, we'll put them somewhere. Try a different spot, perhaps. We are at one meter depth and we are clipped at 12 meters. Not that you have to be exactly at that, but it seems like sort of a reasonable. Reasonable spot. Even when we, were, when we were drifting down the river, when we drifted through this spot, we saw, we caught a lot of shads. I mean, they're just in this area. That was quick. Points in float fishing again. I think maybe the next the next objective with uh, match match rod fishing might be to save up enough to get I may already have enough actually but to get one get a match rod that could reasonably catch carp and kind of work 
float fishing into our carp fishing. Maybe have one float fish set up and with our two carp rods for feeder fishing. Could be interesting. I don't know if I'm pretty out of touch with Amber. Uh, back when I was playing Amber Lake a lot, I just didn't hear of a lot of people that were finding it to be better to use match rods versus just carp, carp rods, but I'm sure it works reasonably well. Certainly before Amber, there were some places where, especially using sandwich bait, um, people were having a lot of success at uh, Tuba and even Bear, I think, with catching some of the bigger carp on match rods. And I know that, um, I think it was Tor on YouTube, right? Who is Boris here in, in RF4. Shout out to you. Thanks for your uh, feedback on YouTube. I think that's who it was that was asking me about possibly doing a video on the use of match rods. And I, I, even at, at towards the end of this video, I may go look in the store and we can kind of look together and I can share my thoughts. But the truth of the matter is when I stopped playing, when I took a break from RF4 last, I think I had just recently unlocked match rods. And so my experience with match rods is very limited. And so I would have to get a lot more game time in before I feel like I'd be able to speak with too much confidence. I guess being around the game for so long and talking to people that have used them, I have a pretty reasonable sense of why they are so desirable to unlock. If you're wanting to fish for bigger fish from a uh, float fishing perspective, obviously you're going to need to use match rods, but getting into the details, the intricacies of it, I'm probably not the right person at this point. I haven't, in my mind, made the comparison to the bolo rods as much, just because the bolo rods, in, for me at least, just sort of seem to be their own kind of thing because of how far you can let them drift on the river, how easily they sort of um, allow you to do that type of fishing. It's kind of its own thing. But there's no doubt that when you can graduate up to, there's a really good one, money was. And we're continuing to get points. When you can graduate, graduate up to match rods, obviously your options of um, float fishing. So at 70%, we can use a carp hair pop-up rig. So that might be part of the issue is we may not be high enough to use some of the carp rigs with match 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 fishing yet um but yeah i mean just just the amount of strength that you have available to you in the rods the match rods are just so much potentially can be so much stronger and able to handle the larger fish casting distance also comes into play there's just a lot of a lot of advantages from from what i do know of match rods really fun to uh, log into RF4 and see so many both old and new friends hanging out in chat. Glad to see you all are still enjoying the game and hanging out here. Well, it just seems like 
It is just still going so strong. I mean, I, I possibly could just do this for the whole day and make a killing. All right, so let's, uh, oh, I don't like with the boats being in the way, though. I was trying to figure out a place to put them, but so they're not really in our way, though. For our match rod fishing. Do we have a clip on there? All right, we'll just try kind of out. So this one's the one with the earthworms. I think I have a very basic ground bait in there. Um, it might be like a, a Gibble Crucian ground bait, something that really probably anything will be interested in. And then this is the grasshopper one. This is sort of your, this is sort of your, um, your chub test, right? Like the grasshoppers will tell you if there's any nice chubs in the water. Big enough hook on there that you're probably not going to catch much else on it. You're not going to waste your time with too many roaches or anything that are going to get in your way. At least not too much. I've got to, um, I need to do a little bit more preparation. I'm trying to set up a short um, Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord um, video, but I've got to do a little bit more prep work on my current campaign save to be able to cover it. I'm trying to cover basically how you start trade caravans and um, can purchase shops in different cities which both make a really good passive income, but I need to progress a little bit more to be able to do that in the campaign. So I may work on that a little bit this afternoon and try to make a video there, but I could see, I mean, I'm just really enjoying this. I could see possibly doing a stream if I have time with work tonight with uh, fishing, at least for part of the time. I've been sort of warming up more and more to enjoying this. And I know that some folks have been wondering if I would stream it some, so. We might do that. Um, because I am working tonight, some of that will just depend on what work looks like. Looks like the earthworms are getting some kind of nibble on them on our feeder. We are about to get to the point of the first cast of the day not having a bite on it before it floats out of reach. Oh, never mind. We actually got it. Or we had a chance at it. Let me know if the picture in the top right hand side corner is uh, bothering anyone. I've kind of moved it away from the bottom so that some of the bottom information is more available. The only thing you're not seeing now is the time and weather conditions. Whoa! See, I've got to be so careful there. I almost snapped it. Those sigils aren't worth that much. Maybe that one's big enough to to matter, but Golly. all that ringing and no, you know, if these are within sight, maybe I ought to just put the put the uh, blinkers on there so we don't have to hear that ringing. Yeah, that sigil just about ruined our day. Let's go down to like a twelve friction break.
just wanted to make sure I remembered to close the close the um, the reel on that feeder. I was really hoping that really big fish was going to be a shad. Like a, I guess that would probably be a trophy that size, but um, it was a sitchel. A lot of shad in a short amount of time. So we can at least see what fish species this is. That is a chub, but that wasn't on the grasshoppers. Maybe um, maybe our hook size is a little too big for the chub with the grasshoppers. Only two shad over 300 grams. Yeah, 
And I, I don't remember what hook size we have on those worms, but I bet it's a little on the large size. Um, yeah, it's a size 12. I mean, that's fine. If we had smaller one, it might get a little higher bite rate, but I don't know if we want a higher bite rate on the feeder when we're having this kind of activity on the shad. Hopper. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you what, it stresses me out how they have changed the feeder bites to work now. After years and years of having them go one way, it's quite the adjustment. All right, there's a little bream. That's interesting. Maybe the bream are in this spot. I mean, I guess we could try that at night sometime, see if there's decent bream here. Need to figure out what the bream are biting on though. That's a good one. Let's see if we get a few more good ones here in the home stretch. Whoa. That is not what we want. I think we messed that one up. Two in a row. Hmm. That's a nice fish.
I did change this to fluorocarbon leader, 3.1 kilo. I just don't like using fluorocarbon leaders and fluorocarbon line. It's the, the cost of it seems ridiculous to, there's no need to double up. So went back to mono line with fluorocarbon leader for now. Just literally all day. All day in this spot. If that still has a fish on it or not but something pulled it way away from where it was with the way feeder fishing bites work though it could have just moved it and then dropped it again let's see if anything's on there This would be a frustrating place to, to bottom fish, it seems like, if that's all you were trying to do here, at least from what I've seen. Six shads, two sigils, and one perch. Oh, uh, we also had a Black Sea Shamaya. Notice some things are out of stock in the store here, but at least the stuff that I noticed that was out of stock, it was still in stock at, stock at Volkov, so just have to travel a bit. not what we're fishing for. Ooh. Yeah, 
This might be a reasonable place for bream species at night. I don't know. Not a reasonable place for grasshoppers, though. It's been awful. to see so we're casting kind of in between the two holes that doesn't really make sense for bream probably want to cast like over here or well over there It's night time. Give me one second. All right, let's just see what this fish is. is a bream species um, so while we're looking in the store and selling our fish let's just throw out a couple of test things here um, what size hook do we have 12 that's a little small but that will catch the um, white-eyed species I guess and since we have regular worms on there that might be good Let's make sure nothing has showed up uh, recently. No. Oh yeah, there is one. And it's off worms. Okay, that is so interesting. All right, so for with this one, let's do, um, bream mix. And what kind of line do we have on here? 6.8, yeah, we do 6.4. I mean, that's a little small for, for what I would really normally use for bream. Uh, we'll do 10 on this one. I really like size 8 for bream, but all right, so we've got that one there. Let's throw this one this way, and let's get the clip out to about 20, ooh, 22. Is that long enough? It's long enough to at least be in the first first hole, I think might not be in the deepest part all right let's see what happens there okay so um for our our shad yeah we end up with two over 300 so it so should be pretty good silver um let's see oh well, we do have a sigil order but yeah, you need four of them. Really no orders for us uh, that I can tell. White bream. I have uh, not seen white bream here, but I guess they they are here somewhere. So let's see how we did. Oh yeah, 126 silver. So very good. Um, over 10 silver for the larger shad. Still sub trophy size, so it's just pretty good silver, you know. Rudd are all, have always been decent silver, better than roaches, typically. Uh, that Shamaya is was a good one, and the white-eyed bream, of course, are good. The largest sigil that we caught was okay for silver, but like per gram, it doesn't compare. Um, 
but if you get to the smaller size, I mean, once you get to 130 gram, you go up to two. But as we saw before, where's the jump? It should be around 180 grams, right? Yep, so right here. This is the first one that goes over 180 grams and it goes up to nearly six silver. The next one is, you know, 2.7. So, um, so pretty good, you know, decent silver and also just leveling up our, our uh, float fishing. Seems like a pretty good deal. So let's see real quick before we, before we uh, call it. Well, first of all, this is not, that line has drifted. All right, let's see what's on this one. Because if we could find something to do at night here, that would really help. Because obviously fishing for these shads or um, even drifting down the river. There's a white bream. Okay, that's kind of exciting. And that was just kind of like over in this direction. Well, that's... That's promising, isn't it? What What is going on with this? It's like it is just... I guess it had a fish on there and then the fish got off? Wow. All right, well, let's don't, let's don't give up on just straight out here yet then because I do think that had a fish on. There's no way it would have drifted that far straight to the dock like that without a fish's help. Um, okay, so what were we going to look at? Oh, yeah, the store real quick. All right, so the, um, the one match rod I have that's, reasonably large I mean this is still we'll see how much this, the Siberia model ones cost this one only goes up to 16.2 the other match rod I have is very small it's a starter match rod it um, only goes up to nine kilos so it would be fine for what we're doing here but obviously you're not going to want to carp fish for big carp on that necessarily so let's look at the match rods um, well let's do some comparison so let's look at the bolo rods so what's without spending a crazy amount of money, let's say you get an Onega, um, or no, Model 1. This is comparable, right? So Model 1 will cost you 1,500 silver, which is a lot. But uh, that only goes up to 10 kilos, right? So much smaller than the Model 1 match rod, which is about the same price, maybe slightly more. But you go up to 16.2 kilos. So to me... The big difference in match rods when you get there is you're able to start catching comparable size fish to what you might be fishing for on a feeder rod, um, but using the float technique, obviously. And um, so that's the one I have that costs 1600 What would be the next step for me that would make sense? I mean, this is a little bit more expensive, and what are we talking about? The jump to load capacity is four kilos, so that's pretty reasonable. Uh, 20 kilo, you know, you could definitely do some, some good work with that. It's still not great though. And then what a lot of people have, like, uh, this one goes up to 42 kilo. So without any of the like bonuses on there, I mean, you're paying over 4,000 silver for that, but without all the bonuses, you're getting a lot of strength. Um, this one's not too expensive, but I think... It's not very strong. The thing you're getting here is plus 5% to your float skill. But if you go with the Rebellion, 6,000 silver, um, still not that strong, but you're getting plus two. So, I mean, I, you know, again, that's not what you're going to use for carp fishing. Is there anything you would use other than that goes up to 19.5? So that's fine. That's an option. You've got the Falcon. It goes up to 44, but you could also get away with this. It goes up to 20, um, which is a little more. So that's similar to this, right? The ethnic match. Ethnic match, silverfish, um, that's 20. I mean, and if you compare that to like a carp rod, uh, this is like a starter carp rod, I would say. 40 kilo, it's a lot less. So match rods are expensive. I guess that's the that's the uh, bottom line here. Um, match rods are expensive. Even feeder rods, so not carp, but feeder, 
get into a model one a lot stronger 30 kilo a lot less money so match rods do allow you to start to get into some trickier float fishing but you're paying for it you are paying for it it's kind of like going to what is it jerking rods for carp um, I don't have any of these I would love to try it you know um, it's actually one of my goals is when I'm really when I get back into this game one of these times is to really grind out for some uh, for at least one of these to go for pike you know but you know model one I guess 1600 that's reasonable what does that go up to I mean you could do a lot of damage with that so I guess that would be fine it's not too pricey I guess it's the ones that that get really so why does this one jump to 5300 I guess because it's 10 more kilos. Those are just some really strong rods. Really strong rods. And jerkbait rod, you have to be at 90%. And we're at 81.9. So we still have some work to do there. I guess we could drift on this river for a while and take turns leveling up our um, float fishing and spin fishing. I'm 100% on bottom fishing because that's almost what I do 100% of the time. All right, let's see if any one of these has fish just sitting on there it looks like this one does so this might be something to explore at nighttime well that's not what we thought it was going to be though that's a chub fishing this spot might be worth at nighttime you know if you can keep that silver coming in that's going to be another uh, another white bream i think now it's a regular bream okay Um, yeah, pretty cool. I wonder what that, uh, white bream order is. So five pieces over 300. I mean, that might be doable if you really put three feeders out in a night and fished off that dock and put worms on there. I'm kind of tempted to try that. I'm not going to do it on this video, but I am tempted to try it. Hey, listen, thanks for being here. As always, it's great having you here. I really appreciate it. Uh, I've got some personal goals if I want to work on getting my float fishing even higher um, to be able to try things like the carp hair sandwich bait at 80%. That's just a big deal, right? Um, bait fish float, I'm not as worried about that at this point. I don't know anything about these using these soft lures or the lures. Those may be really good, but I'm nowhere near 100%, right? So that's kind of a distant dream. But, you know, getting to 70 and 80%, that's not that that's not that terrible um and then with with spin fishing uh we're at 81.9 so heavy bait case bait casting reels are not in the game yet they they hopefully will come eventually um, but my next goal would be to get the the uh jerk bait rig and a jerk bait rod so that's where we are very good. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate all the support. And uh, like I said, I'll try to get some uh, some kind of stream in with RF4 soon. And I definitely want to keep making these videos, even if I'm doing some of the same content over and over like we did today. Um, I just really enjoy putting these together. So thanks for being here and uh, peace out. I'll see you next time.